Hello and welcome. This is Jim Eisenach, President and CEO of FAIR, and I'm really pleased to spend a little time telling you about what FAIR does and how you fit into the family of FAIR. The mission of FAIR is to develop the next generation of physician scientists in anesthesiology. That's fairly specific, but it suggests perhaps that we're only interested in people that want to do research directly related to the specialty. I think a better way to phrase it is this, that we want to develop the next generation of physician scientists anesthesiologists. So yes, we are funding people within the specialty, but they need not study what you might think of as anesthesiology, whether that's in the laboratory or in clinical trials. So let me give you a few examples. This fellow is John Snow. If you Google John Snow, you end up with a lot of pictures from the Game of Thrones. But John Snow was a physician in 19th century uh, Northern England, and he's famous for two findings. First of all, he is a bit of a father of uh, epidemiology in that he discovered that it was water that was responsible for the cholera outbreak as opposed to something in the air. Well, here's an anesthesiologist, uh, Mike Joyner from Mayo Clinic. Mike is the leader of the National Task Force on the use of plasma to treat COVID infection. The other thing that John Snow was known for was providing chloroform anesthesia for pain relief to Queen Victoria on the birth of one of her children. This was highly controversial at the time since the Church of England believed with a literal reading of the Bible that it would be a sin to provide pain relief during labor. The Queen pioneered the way, but Jon Snow was the first obstetric anesthesiologist, if you will. And here's another anesthesiologist, George Mashur, who also got into trouble with organized religion when he studied the brain mechanisms of the near-death experience. Here's Emory Brown, who is one of nine individuals in the United States who's been elected to the National Academy of Medicine and the National Academy of Science and the National Academy of Engineering. He studies consciousness and mechanisms of anesthesia, as well as sleep medicine. Jacob Sunshine is a young investigator, fair funded, uh, trying to come up with a way to automate reports of opioid abusers who stop breathing in the community. Carmen Green is an anesthesiologist who for many years has studied health care disparities and has co-authored many reports from the National Academy of Medicine. Peter Nagala, the chair at the University of Chicago, was a fair-funded investigator who has studied how anesthetic drugs can also be antidepressants. So he's interested in a psychiatric disease as an anesthesiologist. Mark Newman at the University of Pennsylvania studies an important problem in the specialty, and that is 30-day mortality after major surgery, which, if it were a disease, would be the third leading cause of death in the pre-COVID era. Right now, it would be the fourth leading cause of death. And he's looking, using patient-centered outcomes, on whether anesthetic choice alters outcomes after fractured hip emergency surgery. And finally, uh, Gunisha Kaur, and she normally doesn't dress like this. She normally dresses like the rest of the crew there. But in this case, she was presenting to a global meeting that included Pope Francis. Gunisha was fair funded and is now NIH funded to study torture victims and refugee crisis and social justice issues. These are people that are anesthesiologists, many of whom have received fair support to study a variety of problems that our patients meet. So you shouldn't think of anesthesiology as only a gas or an injection. To tell you what FAIR does, I decided I would make it personal. So this is my story. I was going to be a chemist. I went to chemistry graduate school, and after a couple of years, I uh, was disillusioned with chemistry, and so my fallback was to go to medical school. I liked acute medicine. I did a year of medicine, and I liked the treatment of pain, and I ended up going into anesthesiology as a result. Towards the end of residency, I decided I was going to go into private practice, was interested in moving to the Southeast. So my wife and I moved to North Carolina where I did a fellowship. And now, 35 years later, I spent almost all of my time doing research related to acute and chronic pain, including over $80 million in NIH funding. So how did I get from that part of my story to what I actually did? Well, there were three factors. One, I think, to me, which was very important, was exposure to a research environment. So these are the institutions where I went to graduate school, medical school, and residency, and I was exposed there 
to people everywhere who were very interested in asking why, how, and how can we improve the care of our patients. I've had many mentors in my life. One of the most important one is this fellow, Tony Ox. As I was approaching the end of residency, I heard him give a grand rounds lecture, and it completely changed my career path. He is a PhD scientist, very active in the anesthesia community. And then finally, in addition to mentors, we also need and have sponsors. This was the most important one to me, the chair of the anesthesia department when I moved to North Carolina, Frank James. And what Frank did was to provide me two things. He provided me time, and he introduced me and facilitated introduction to national networks. So that's how I got the great joy of having a career in research. So those things, exposure, mentors, being able to network with others, and time are the key factors that FAIR is focusing on. So you are medical students. You're in the Medical Student Anesthesia Research Fellowship, or MSARF as we call it in FAIR. The goals of the MSARF program, as you know from having applied, are threefold really, to expose you to a research experience during the summer, which unfortunately we're missing this summer to provide an introduction to another mentor in your life, and that would be the person that you would interact with related to research, and a bit to begin to create a network related to research in the anesthesia space. We don't really provide you time, although we do provide a stipend for your summer experience. At the end of the MSARF experience, the students normally come together, and this was last year's crew. It seems so odd now to look at a picture of all these smiling faces of them sitting right next to each other, touching each other, talking with no masks. It's just a very odd thing to look at these days. As you can see in the upper right corner, uh, this is where the students present the research they did during the summer on posters and undergo a bit of networking. But we also have a didactic program and the didactic program is led by two groups, a really fascinating grassroots organization in the specialty called Early Stage Anesthesiology Scholars, or ESAS, and a much more senior group of uh, faculty that are part of a selected academy of research mentors in anesthesiology. Dr. Hopf and Olivia have done a fantastic job of putting together a program for you through the summer, and we hope that you'll participate in this activity in a virtual meeting in October. Following medical school, FAIR also has a program called the Research Fellowship Grant, or RFG. It's a one-year research fellowship. The goals of that program are primarily to solidify a mentoring relationship between the awardee and their mentor and to provide protected time to get further training and research. Since there's only one or two possibly awardees per year, we don't really have much of an emphasis on networking. And then finally, uh, we have what's called a Mentored Research Training Grant, which is where most of the two or so million dollars of research support that FAIR provides every year goes towards. The Mentored Research Training Grant is for junior faculty within 10 years of completing their training. It lasts for two years for a quarter million dollars, and most importantly, it requires 75% protected time to do research. FAIR tries in many ways to mimic the NIH process in everything that it does as part of a way to educate junior faculty who are going down the path of federal funding to the process. Similar to what NIH does in a grant review committee, we have an independent committee, the American Society of Anesthesiologists Committee on Research, that reviews the applications for the MRTG award. They use an NIH format. They use the same form as the NIH does to uh, judge and score the scientific priority of these grants. They prioritize them, and then there's a second review, similar to what the NIH Council does after the grants are reviewed for science. That's done by the FAIR Grant Management Committee, and they recommend which grants to fund, which are funded then by the FAIR Board of Directors. The goal of this two-year grant is to have individuals ready to apply to the NIH or equivalent federal organization uh, for either further training or for their first independent research award. Starting last year, we began an annual meeting of MRTG awardees, and this is the first crew. It's held in the ASA Conference Center in Washington, D.C. You can see the White House in the background there. After considerable discussion, the FAIR board felt that this was one thing that was critical, this 
ability to network and that we needed to add this to the funding that we provided for the research and the time that they have. It's a two-day meeting in Washington, D.C. There are 20 or so MRTG awardees at any one time. There's some didactic material. It's mostly around career development. This is a what we call a mock study section. Uh, it's a practice review uh, of grants. Two NIH grants were given out to all of the MRTG awardees, and they had to serve the role of reviewers in what the NIH calls a study section, which is a grant review committee. As part of that, we have NIH officials that are present, and uh, we make it quite real and the goal there is to have the MRTG awardees understand what are the important factors that are going to be reviewed and what the key problems that people typically have in preparing such grants. They also present posters like the medical students do. I like this picture. It almost looks like they're, these two fellows are dueling here, but it's two sides of a poster board. So each of the awardees presents their research to their colleagues. A major goal of this meeting, though, is not so much the science and not so much the didactics, but to get these 20 people to get to know each other well, to meet important program officials from the National Institutes of Health, and to meet leaders within FAIR but also within the specialty. So we have a lot of emphasis and a lot of time spent socially. We joke about it, but at every meal there's assigned seating, which forces the awardees to sit with other people at each time. And at each table there will be an NIH program official, a senior member of FAIR, a FAIR staff member, and two or three uh, awardees. From this, we're hoping to develop a community of people who, as they go through their careers, even if they're studying very different science, will be going through the same problems and can reach out to each other. So that's what I have to say. That's what FAIR does. We're so happy to have you with us. And I want you to know that it doesn't end when you finish your fellowship, that you have a friend in FAIR, and I hope that you come back to visit us soon.